I am to interview a patient and I'd like to give you some thumbnail sketch of what Gestalt therapy stands for. Uh, Gestalt therapy is working on an equation. Awareness, equal present time, equal reality. In contrast to depth psychology, we try to get hold of the obvious, of the surface, of the situation in which we find ourselves and to develop the emerging gestalt strictly on the I and thou, here and now basis. Any escape into the future or the past is examined as a likely resistance against the ongoing encounter. A modern man has alienated given up so much of his potential that his ability to cope with his existence becomes badly impoverished. My aim is this. The patient should recover his lost potential. He should integrate the conflicting polarities, understand the difference between game playing, especially the playing of verbal games, on the one hand and of genuine, authentic, beha confident behavior on the other. The civil war of inner conflicts weakens the efficiency and comfort of the patient, but every bit of integration will strengthen it. Now, in the safe emergency of the therapeutic situation, I repeat, in the safe emergency of the therapeutic situation, the patient begins to take risks and to transform his energies from manipulating the environment for support into developing greater and greater self-support that is reliance on his own resources. This process is called maturation. Once the patient has learned to stand on his own feet emotionally, intellectually and economically, his need for therapy will collapse. He will wake up from the nightmare of his existence. The basic technique is this. Not to explain things to the patient, but to provide the patient with opportunities to understand and to discover himself. For this purpose, I manipulate and frustrate the patient in such a way that he's confronting himself in this process, he identifies with his lost potential, for instance, through assimilating his projections by acting out, by acting out the alien parts of himself. Principally, I consider any interpretation to be a therapeutic mistake, as this would imply that the therapist understands the patient better than the patient himself takes away from the patient a chance of discovering himself by himself and prevents him from finding out his own values and style. On the other hand, I disregard most of the content of what the patient says and concentrate most on the non-verbal level as this is the only, which, only one which is less subject to self-deception in his verbal pseudo self-expression. On the non-verbal level, the relevant gestalt will always emerge and can dealt with in the here and now. We are going to have an interview for half an hour. Right away, I'm scared. You say you're scared, but you're smiling. I don't understand how one can be scared and smile at the same time. And I'm also suspicious of you. I think you understand very well. I think you know that <laughs> when I get scared, I laugh or I kid to cover up. <laughs> but do you have stage fright? Uh, I don't know. You I'm mostly aware of you. I'm afraid that... Uh, I'm afraid you're going to have such a direct attack that uh, you're going to get me in the corner and I'm afraid of it. I want you to be more on my you side. You I get you in your corner and you put your hand on your chest. Mm -hmm. Is this your corner? 
Well, it's like, yeah, it's like I'm afraid, you know. Where would you like to go? Can you describe the corner you like to go to? Yeah, uh, it's back in a corner where, where I'm completely protected. And where you would be safe of me, for me? Well, I know I wouldn't really. Well, but it feels safer. This, yes. Well, imagine you were in this corner. And you're perfectly safe now. What would you do in that corner? I just sit. Just, uh, just sit. Yes. Now, how long would you sit? I don't know, but this is so funny as you're saying this. This reminds me of when I was a little girl. Every time I was afraid, I'd feel better sitting in a corner. Okay, you're panicky. Little, are you a little girl? Well, no, but it's the same feeling. Are you a little girl? This feeling reminds me of it. Are you no, a little girl? No, no, no. No, at last. How old are you? Thirty. And you're not a little girl? No. Okay. So you're a 30 year old girl who's afraid of a guy like me? Well, I don't even know if I'm. I, yeah, I do know I'll be afraid of you. you. I get real defensive with you. Now, what can I do to you? You can't do anything, but I can sure feel dumb, and I can feel stupid for not having the right answers. Now, what would it do for you to be, feel dumb and stupid? I hate it when I'm stupid. What would it do for you to be dumb and stupid? Let's put it so, like this. What would it do to me if you would play dumb and stupid? It makes you all the smarter and all the higher above me. Then I really have to look up to you because oh. you're so smart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And butter me up right at left. No, I think you can do that all by yourself. Oh. I think the other way around. If you play dumb and stupid, you force me to be more explicit. That's been said to me before, but I don't buy it. I don't know. Oh, what are you doing with your feet now? Wiggling. <laughs> What's the joke now? Oh, I'm afraid you're going to notice everything I do. Gee. Do you don't... want me? I, yeah, I want you to help me become more relaxed, yes. I don't want to be so defensive with you. I don't like to feel so defensive. Like you're treating me as if I'm stronger than I am, and I want you to protect me more and be nicer to me. Are you aware of your smile? You don't believe a word. What <laughs> I saying. do too, but I know you're gonna pick on me for it. <laughs> sure, you're bluff, you're phony. Do you believe you're meaning that seriously? Yeah. If you say you're afraid and you laugh and you giggle and you squirm, it's phony. You put in a performance for me. Oh, I I resent that very much. Can you express it? Yes, sir. I most certainly am not being phony. I, I will admit this. It's hard for me to show my embarrassment, and I hate to be embarrassed. But, boy, I resent you calling me a phony. Just because I smile when I'm embarrassed or I'm put in a corner doesn't mean I'm being a phony. Wonderful. Thank you. You didn't smile for the last minute. Well, I'm mad at you. That's, I. Uh, that's right. You didn't have to cover up your anger with your smile. Now, you, in that moment, in that minute, you were not a fool. Well, at that minute, I was mad, though. I wasn't embarrassed. In other words, when you're mad, you're not a phony. I still resent that. I'm not Do a phony when I'm nervous. Again. I, I want to get mad at you. I, I, you know what I'd like to do? I, 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 I want you on my level so I can pick on you just as much as you're picking on me. Okay, pick on me. I have to wait till you say something that I can pick on. But what does this mean? Can you develop this movement? It's, uh, I can't find words. I want to... Develop this, as if you were dancing. I want to start all over again with you. Okay, let's start all over. I know a corner I'd like to put you on. I'd like to ask you a question, and, and because I have a feeling you don't like me right off the bat, and I want to know if you do. Can you not play Fritz Perls, not liking Gloria? What would he say? He'd say that she's a phony, for one. So you are a phony? You're a phony, and you're a flip little girl, and you're a show-off. What would you answer to that? I, I, I know what I'd answer.
answer, I'd say I think you are too. Now say, tell this to me. You tell me what a phony I am. Well, I'm... See, Fritz, you're a phony. Well, phony is not quite the right word, but it's more like a, a show-off. A show-off. Like you know all the answers. Yeah. And I want you to be more human, and that doesn't seem very human to me. To know all the answers is not very human. Yeah, to right away find out how I'm kicking my feet and why am I doing like this. Why are you doing like that? Oh dear, I've got eyes. I can see you're kicking your feet. I don't need a uh, scientific computer to see that you're kicking your feet. What's big about that? You don't need to be wise to see that you're kicking your feet. I know, but it seems like you're trying to find some reason for it. I don't. It's your imagination. Okay, I know what I'd like from you. Can I tell you what I'd like from you? Yeah. I'd like you to be aware that I'm kicking my feet and to be aware that I'm giggling when I'm really nervous and accept it instead of putting me on the defense of having to explain it. I don't want to have to explain why I'm doing these things. Did I ask you to explain it? You said, why am I or what am I doing? No. Well, I what am I doing, you said. That's right, kicking your feet. I didn't ask you to explain it. It's your imagination. It's not this Fritz, it's the Fritz of your imagination. It's a big difference. Now do this again. Again. How do you feel now? I don't know. Playing stupid. I'm I, not playing stupid. I don't see, know. I don't right know. Answer. This is playing stupid. You did something with your hair there. Is by any chance something in my hair what you object to? No. No. Okay. No, but I, uh, your your hair and your features go along with the, the feeling I had about you earlier. I, I had a feeling I could be afraid of you. <coughs> and you're the type of person that seems like you demand so much respect and so you're... Please pay for it. I demand so much respect. Play this for you just saw. Well, you know how smart I am. I know more about psychology than you do, Gloria. So anything I say, of course, is right. Can you say the same as Gloria, something similar as Gloria? With the same act as Gloria. I demand respect because... I don't know. You don't no, know. I don't. I identify it with my father, but not me. I don't feel I demand respect. You don't demand respect. No. Sure. Not. As a matter of fact, I'd like more. I'd like you to respect me more. No, you see? So you demand respect. All right, yes. Yes, as a matter of fact, if I could demand respect from you, I would. But do it. Who's preventing you except yourself? I feel if I get myself out on the corner, you're going to let me just drown. You're not going to help me one bit, and I know that I can't quite come up to standards with you. What should I do when you're the corner? Encourage me to come out. Oh, you don't have enough courage to come out by yourself. You need somebody to pull little mamsel in distress out of a corner. Yeah. So anytime you want somebody to uh, pay attention to you, call into a corner and wait till the rescuer comes. Yes, that's exactly what I'd like. And this is what I call phony. Pardon me? This is what I call phony. Why is it phony? I'm admitting to you what I am. How is that a phony? That is a phony because oh. it's a trick, it's a gimmick to call into a corner and wait there until somebody comes to your rescue. I'm admitting it. I know what I'm doing. I'm not being phony. I'm not pretending I'm so brave. I resent that. I feel like you're saying unless I come out openly and stand on my own, I'm not a phony. Baloney. I'm just, right. as, just as real sitting in that corner as I am out here all by myself. But you're not sitting in that corner. Well, not now. And